Hi crafting friends, welcome to my podcast. My name is Barbara Reds Vickers and I'm Bondi Crafter. In this episode, I've got a lot of fun things to talk about. I've got a list. <laughs> We've just had our 50th wedding anniversary, friends. 50 years. It's amazing. <laughs> Some of my friends are just 50. I was like, oh, I'm so much older. <laughs> but we're still keeping going. Um, John and I, well, mainly John, is helping me and we've just about finished reorganizing the craft room that is very exciting in the craft room I've got two main things that I'm interested in that's fabrics and wool yarn so I had to reorganize all the yarn and put it into smaller crates because the big crates I just couldn't lift anymore not that there's not that I've got a big collection <laughs> of wool I had them divided into colours and then into mohair and thick yarn and thin yarn. You know how it is. And so we went to Ikea and bought some small crates. Uh, smaller crates. <laughs> so all my yarns are stored differently now. And the fabrics have been put up higher so I can see them. And easier to get to. So we'll have a look at that near the end. That's very exciting. I love my craft room and we all I think we all love our stuff that we use with crafting but it's fun then I have some projects with organizing the craft room I found projects that I had only half done that were nearly done I think I've got about five of them I'm going to show you that should be fun I do need to finish some things though. I don't know how I half finish things like and then put it away. I probably think, I don't know what I think. <laughs> we will discuss it more. And then I made a hack. It was a, I've made some sh um, dresses last year, some fen dresses. I made 10 of them, all the same pattern, but all different fabrics remember that it's in a previous um podcast a sewing podcast and so what i wanted to do was because they had got short sleeves or no sleeves i wanted um a three-quarter sleeve black top that would go over the top and just be very light and i came to the brainwave of cutting up a t-shirt just cut it up the front no stick so I had gone through my t-shirts previously and put some in the recycling bag. So I got one out of the recycling and thought I would dry out my um, hypothesis. It worked out really well and I've done a hack on that too. So I did a separate um, podcast on making a um, t-shirt into Valero, but I am also going to include some of it in this podcast which I think is very interesting and why I made it was why I wanted a bolero was I really love boleros I think it's got a Spanish vibe but I have got um <laughs> muscles they're not muscles in my upper arm and so I just need to cover them this is one of my black t-shirts and so I thought this is an excellent chance and when you cut up the t-shirt you don't have to do anything to it so it's just like uh, because it's knitted you don't have to end it off or anything it's just like sticking and I think it looks okay so let me know what you think about it for I don't know I think I'm going to do a few more I think I might get one of my new t-shirts and do that to it and yeah, because when I buy lace boleros, they're very see-through, beautiful, but uh, always tight on my upper arms, even though I buy a 1X, which is like size 18 or 20. The body is a bit big and the sleeves are too tight. So, and there's never any um, seam allowance for me to let them out. So this is why I did that hack. And so, yeah. This is what I've got to talk about today. 
works in progress. I have two hats in progress. I frogged one and this is the yarn from it. And I am making the Alpine Bloom. I think it's beautiful. This is how far I've gotten so far. I like the colours. I really like doing um, a coloured rib. In the pattern it has one by one rib, but I like um, two by two rib. And I also like it with a colour in it. So that's what I've done. And I'm using Jameson's and Smith's colour shaler. It's lovely. And also, I no longer know what this one's called, but it is just such a beautiful colour. It's very rustic. You can see I unravelled it from previous thing. And it still has the kinks in it, but it's fitting up quite well. That's my first hat. And this is my second two hats. They're nearly the same. Um, one's on five millimeter needles and one's on 5.5 millimeter needles. And I'm finding it's um, worsted weight yarn, 10 ply. I'm finding the 5.5 is a nicer um, fabric. So I'm knitting two at a time from the same wool, <laughs> one from the end and one from the other end, and I'm making soldiers' hats. These are for soldiers in Israel, and they're for um, the guys to sleep in. So I thought that was a nice uh, thing for me to do, seeing I can knit, and they need them because it's winter there. And so, yeah, I'm making two, but I probably will make a few more. And the deadline is February, beginning of February. So hopefully I will have them done. I just started this Sunday. Today is Monday. So yesterday, I started those yesterday. And yeah, hoping to get those done soon. So that's my work in progress. Next, we'll have a look at the craft room. It's so fab, friends. Hope you like it. It's like a journey. <laughs> Let's have a look at my craft room reorganization. It's fun. Let's jump in there. John made a short trip to IKEA. These are the old crates that are too big for me to lift. So we got some uh, smaller crates. Um, they're on sale. They're $8 each. The, um, I think they are 48 litres or 45 litres each. And we got eight. And so I'm putting um, colours in them. I don't have eight containers full of yarn. But I do have separate, so I've got a brown crate, a crate for my um, specials like uh, <clears throat> yes, I'll come back to the specials and exotics. Then I've got a blue crate, a cone crate. I love the cones. I got them when they were on sale a few years back. <clears throat> I've got a brown, light brown, a purple, a black and a white. They're lovely. Got a black crate, black and white, mainly black. Um, yeah. And then over here I still have to do these. Uh, this is... Lovelies, <laughs> mohairs, um, and white. Not all white, but white with colour. 
and then a brown, brown and white. Yeah, and then I'm going to have a crate for um, projects. So I have four projects on the go at the moment. I've got a blue um, alpine bloom hat, the Nordska jumper. I want someone to knit the shawl for me because I have tried and tried and tried. Can't do it, but I have the yarn for it and maybe I'll pay someone to make it for me. In the specials, I have Hulse Garn Super Soft, which I love. I bought a lot of them when they were on sale. They were like three, $3.50, I think, US a ball, which was a bargain. I got a few colours. And then... I've got black elephant skeins in the bottom one and uh, the love me, I can't see what the other one is, but I have specials there. I also have some Eurodal yarn, which I love. And in this other crate, which is a lovely crate, of sock yarns. And these lids are really nifty because they don't need a clasp, they just suction on with a sort of a a clip thing which holds it down and so in my sock crate i have all the beautiful sock yarns that i've bought i just think they're lovely i didn't realize i had so many there's probably 20 balls there it's so nice to have them all organized a spot where the bigger crates were in front of my fabrics and I need to see my fabrics and my books down there so the little crates will be easy for me to move and it will look more organized I'll also also take the things which I have like batting out of the big crate although I might leave it in that crate there's two others under that I'll take those out I also want to create one of the big ones that I emptied for my winter clothes so also shawls and things so they should fit in there nicely and that's the only space I have left <laughs> to store things and I really don't like storing them in front of my fabrics but there's nothing I can do it is a small um, art deco flat and I love it and we make do with what we have I have three special crates. <laughs> they are all special, but this is my most, most favourite. So I've got my minis. Remember I was collecting minis? So I've got a lot of minis. I've got uh, yarns from the Gathered Sheep from the UK. Um, Skeen Sisters from Australia. They are lovely. And then I have my skeins that I haven't wound up. So I've got Black Elephant. I love Black Elephant. The colours are just so fabulous. This looks like a paint box, doesn't it? It is just gorgeous. And then I have Hedgehog Fibres. I love hedgehog fibers i got a few of them i also got hedgehog fiber minis i love them some of them i have spun up some i have not yet but the balls are just beautiful i just love the colors and then i have a few skeins from skein which is an australian um dyer she's up the coast near coffs harbor from me about 300 kilometers and yeah and attic spin dye which is gorgeous too they are my that is my most favorite box i think it's the colors are just so exotic i love greens i do love greens i have some beautiful silk mohair greens 
from Isagar. I think their silk mohair is just beautiful and luxe. I also have some Appledore from John Arbor. And, oh, Attic Spindi. The colours are just beautiful. Some I'm keeping in the bag. I just don't want some little bugs to think it's home, even though I don't have any and I'm really particular. I still want to keep them in bags just to be safe. Creed has really thick yarn. It must be 12, 14 ply that I made a couple of medieval hats from. The colours are lovely, but it needs to be winter to make <laughs> make anything from these lovely yarns. This is the blue crate. Uh, I have a mixture of sock yarns. A project. <laughs> These are um, designated for a project, but I'm not sure when I will get around to it. So I really love colour for blues. And yeah, so the crates aren't for as you can see there, but uh, they are in their separate little containers. In this crate, there is brown mohair. There's some of this beautiful 12-ply dewish yarn. It's still got the um, spinning oils in it. it. smells very sheepy, but it is beautiful and I love it. Brown, this is mainly a brown crate. I don't have that many browns. This is an exotic cashmere. <laughs> I have some balls of that. It's lovely. Yeah. And this crate, this is the last crate. I have some cottons, some silks from uh, um, oh, some silk. From Denmark. I have some pinks. I have some little balls of mohair that's left. Exotic. <laughs> A project. And that's all there is in that one. Knitting for olive silk. Remember I made my sister um, a beautiful Luca shawl out of knitting for olive silk. It was just so lovely. She loved it. It's beautiful. So that is my organizing of stash yarn. I love it. They're paints. For me, they're like paints. So just like collecting them, looking at them, playing with them, making something with them. And yeah, just love the colors. I thought I'd give you a small tour of my craft room. This is where I keep my fabrics and my wool. It's like a big cupboard. And I also have spare bed bunks for the grandkids when they come over. Um, they are stashed in with the <laughs> fabrics. So up here I've got a beautiful quilt that my friend Judith made me. It is so beautiful. It's got a waterfall. Geordie painted a picture of her son, Nathan. <clears throat> I love this poster. It's of gramophones and phonographs. Um, John makes the horns. Up the top of the shelving, this is an Ikea shelving system along this wall, is his jigsaw puzzles. He has a few. Then on the next shelf down, we have my book. Books that I'm interested in. Quilting books. Some novels. And some more quilting books. Down this end we have red fabric. So I've sorted these in colours also. So we have red fabrics behind this little pile of batting. We have 
um, batiks. I have a nice little collection of batiks. They're all about a um, quarter of a meter each piece. They're beautiful. And I've got a shelf of those. The reds are when I made a red and white grandma's flower, grandmother's flower garden. Beautiful. Then we come along to the yellows and browns. And there's my sock blockers and a fluorescent tube. <laughs> the yellows are beautiful. Well, they are all beautiful. Then we come down to greens. Love greens. And you can see I collect novelty prints, so mostly small print fabrics. Down a bit further. And then on the bottom shelf, there's more books and the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Along here is my um, architectural books, love architecture, the concept behind flying buttresses and <laughs> such is just beautiful and stained glass windows, medieval churches. Then we have blues. Coming up we have a mix. Probably hear the lawnmower outside. <laughs> Then we have black and whites, my personal favourites. So these are mainly white and black. Or little novelty prints. I have been collecting fabrics for 40 years, so it's quite a catalogue of fabrics. And I don't spend a lot of money on fabrics, although it is my passion that and yarn so an artist spends money on things that he loves to buy paints here's my black and whites and some black with colors some really gorgeous colorful ones there some of the fabrics are also gifts and swaps. On this side we have hexagons that I have cut out and categorized into colors in these beautiful little boxes that are perfect for them for the one inch hexagons. They're like pencil boxes from Ikea I think. Then below that we have things like I collect this beautiful little purse from Spain when we went to Spain and what I'm going to do with that one day is use it as a pocket on a skirt bottom and I think it'd be just perfect because it's already got the zipper and everything and then we come down I have a lot of <laughs> a lot of hexagons cut out these are beautiful so this is my designer shelf this end one so we have K Facet Collective. I'll just sit down. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> Toolers and um, Charlie Harper. Really love Charlie Harper's birds and cats and things. See Charlie Harper here. Oh, he made one with a calico cat on it. So beautiful. I use it in one of my quilts. I don't have um, a collection of big yardage fabrics. I think these would be my biggest uh, yardage and they go up to about a metre. I do have a couple of two metre pieces, but only a few. The K Facet Collective I collected... <laughs> Before the pandemic, like in 2015, I think was the best year 
that our Australian dollar was equal with the American dollar and I was lucky enough to buy a nice lot of K-Facet fabrics from um, Fabric.com, Equalta and a few others and the, um, the postage was good too at that time so I had like a hundred and 50 different prints all small pieces but you know a nice selection to choose from so I did make a quite a few K facet quilts and then these are the planes plain pieces of fabric mainly motor love motor motor planes motor grunge I have boxes of um, things in progress I have lots of cut out pieces I have a few um, projects that I've been working on for years. I really like fussy cutting and I got this fabric and I just had to make synchronized swimming because I love it as a, a sport and I just think the people are beautiful and they are so, um, this fabric in particular is so useful for one inch paper piecing and you see my girls are really in sync <laughs> yeah so I still have a few um, little boxes on the bed and uh, hang on I'll get up oh. and so yeah that's my fabric collection and there are two quilts I was looking at recently so I made a yellow one <laughs> I don't think I've made many yellow quilts in my time but this one is very happy and then this is a K facet um, small quilt that I made and I hand quilted it too and I think it is just fabulous what do you think it is just so happy and so bright and beautiful My stitches are big quilting, big stitch quilting, and they're even, so that's a good thing. And I have quilted straight lines. I really like quilting straight lines. So yeah, that's a tour of my fabrics over here. We have quilts that I've finished. I make baby quilts which are just over a metre square, so the width of fabric fits the back. And they are for babies, for gifts, and for donations, and for babies in need. So they're very handy, and I love making them, and I love giving them. A few more quilts that I've made. My craft room is about eight foot wide by... 14 feet long I would say so both sides have shelves they are quilted placemats above that hat boxes down here we have things that I need binding <laughs> quilt bindings that I've made and are ready to use at the draw of the hat Judith gave me that beautiful um, Scotty Dog box uh, tin a few years back, and I love it. I love Scotty Dogs. I love the red and black tins, and that one is just lovely. And then here we have my collection of cat fabrics. Uh, so I did, well, I still do love cat fabrics, and I'm in a cat fabric swapping group. And before the pandemic, we swapped cat fabrics. And yeah, I have a nice little collection of cat fabrics and I use them. And I just think they're lovely. And it's so, I'm so lucky to have, you know, fabrics that I can just pick whenever I like. Then here we have the spindle for the spinning wheel. My um, quilting threads quite a few of them and then my 
trolleys. You know those trolleys you get from Ikea? I've got three of them. They're like hairdressers, tro tro uh, trolleys. <laughs> can't say trolleys. <laughs> and yeah, that's my, that's my sewing room. And then out there at the end of the hallway is my son Nathan's room. It's the sunroom. There he is. And it's a lovely breeze coming in there off the ocean. And we call it the loja. So he is lucky enough to permanently have a room in the loja and he is the lodger. <laughs> he is not the lodger, he's my son. So I hope you enjoyed having a look at this fabulous, if I do say so myself. This is just a look into my how my mind works, I think. So some of it's a bit um you would think messy, but no, I know where everything is. So that is excellent. And thank you for joining me to have a look at all my knitting books. Thanks for joining me, friends. John has just done some reorganizing of the fabrics for me. And as you can see, it looks much neater. Oh, yeah. He changed all the uh, little crates down to there and put the fabrics up higher where I can see them. So, it's like looking at a picture, isn't it? <laughs> so beautiful. So, yeah, it's nice to have a clean out every so often and reorganize things, revisit projects. And, yeah. These are my projects that I'm halfway through or thinking about doing, but these are the ones that I found. This is the first one. Something on the lid. I do love hexagons, it's my favourite shape. And this is a template that is on top. And it's a half half hexagon, but it's a big one. And it's perfect for making big hexagons. You make half and then you make the second row, you make the bottom part of the hexagon. So you can make anything you like and the patterns are beautiful. And this one is a multi-size hexagon. It makes up to a four and a half inch side hexagon. So it is a lovely one. And this is some of the patterns that you can do with it. I love templates. I've got a whole crate about this size of templates, mainly hexagons. This is the first one. It's just, hang on, let me, let me change the camera. I'm hoping my camera won't fall over. Here's the first one, and this is a big, hexagon project. So what I've done is I've photocopied the pattern that I want and then I cut them, cut them up and that makes the template. This is a smaller one. So these ones are smaller. I've got a few as you can see in here. This is how I cut them out. This is fussy cutting. I love Tula. This is just an interesting box. But these are the bigger hexagons. So. And these are from uh, Katia Marek's 52 blocks. 52 hexagon blocks. And all of the blocks have different names. This is Marie. It's just beautiful. Then we have, I really love Queen Elizabeth. It's a Tula. 
This one is called Dawn. It's a bigger one. I have <laughs> I've taken the name off it. I made it in made these ones in 2019. So you can see how different prints I collect novelty prints so you can see how the different prints um, go into a hexagon and make a different pattern you can have all these different shapes within a hexagon shape it's lovely I do like dawn uh, as a block I think it's lovely fabric is lovely This is Carla, and with this block you can have so many configurations with the interlocking triangles. What's that one? It's block number four. <laughs> this is Sarah. Beautiful. This is Caroline. I like this block too. I like them all. This is Marie. It's a lovely one. Judy. And Caroline again so I do have favorites and I make a few of them but that's just a small <laughs> you can see I've half done this project so I've got a whole crate not a whole crate but a whole lot of the hexagons are already cut out into the size and then as I want to make them I'll cut them into their um, template size so such a lovely book I recommend it. it has all different uh, configurations within a hexagon next we have smaller hexagons these are one inch hexagons and this was a project that I was hoping to do with this one fabric so I was going to fussy cut not this one <laughs> this has got chocolates These are also from the uh, book, but I've photocopied them at different sizes. Japanese one. But this one, in this box, I wanted to make the whole quilt from this fabric. And so I have cut out hundreds, well not hundreds, but a lot of the swimmers, because they're fussy cut, all doing different things. And I bought about four meters of it, I would say. That's a fair while back now. And it is by Timeless Treasures. What's it called? You'd think it would have a name. It doesn't have a name, but they're swimmers. So I thought this would be a really fun project just to have the swimmers doing different things. I really like um, uh, synchronized swimming. And you can have them doing anything. These are one inch hexagons. There's three girls there. And two girls and that's as far as I got with that project so I don't know it's going to take a fair while to to do put those ones back there and we look at the next one
this is a big one and before COVID I went into a Liberty phase and I was collecting a lot of Liberties. I just love them. I've got a whole lot of templates already cut out. These are one inch. And then I've already started. So you can see this is my lovely little collection of Liberties. It's a bag that I've already cut out some and already uh, put fabric with some of them. Some of them I haven't. But Liberty is just lovely, isn't it? It's lovely soft lawn fabric. And I got it from Quiltsmith. Got this one from Quiltsmith. It's just beautiful. So that's my Liberty, <laughs> Liberty project. And then you can see I still have different ones. So I've got some of them separated. This one is no, this shop is no longer... Um, as a shop just lovely keep the template <laughs> so so this half is hexagons this half is drunkard's par and it's a um, nice little drunkard's par that's three inch block I've kept it with it which is good and then I've cut, you can see I've cut them ready to piece so I'll, I'll machine piece those Lucky I kept the template with it. And that's my Liberty project. We've got two more. This one is further along. I have cut out the corners for this one <laughs> and it's one inch hexagons is it one inch hexagons no I think it's a bit bigger they are one one and a half inch hexagons and I've already made them into rows so and I was going for black and white and cats so this is a cat theme quilt we'll see some dogs and some fish and everything there that's row one and I've I've numbered I've even numbered the rows so I know where they go so that's good and there's another row and then when we've got the rows all pieced we join them together like that And you can see it makes uh, makes a star with the hydrangeas. I think I've got about uh, 12 rows in this crate of cats pieced into nice long strips. So you can see my projects are coming along, but I just stalled. So... I have them out and I'm hoping this year to get them finished. Get this one finished anyway. So you can see some of them are just pinned and not sewn together. And these are all my favourite novelty prints that I collect. Some are not connected to anything. Isn't this fab? I do have a nice collection of cat and dog fabrics. Uh, I was in a fabric collecting group of just cats. So we swapped cat fabrics. So for birthdays and such, we, fa we swapped cat fabrics. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> well, it may not be, but um, I think it is. And so, yeah, I have quite a lot of 
same prints and I have bigger hexagons which are the size of these hexagons but not peas so they're just three and a half inch hexagons and they're ready to go around the edge of this quilt how I piece them into rows first I piece the corners and then I join them up It's just fun going through projects, you know, that you haven't seen for a while and should have finished. This is a theme fabric. <laughs> I love clocks. Clock prints. And spots. And this is the last one. So some of these hexagons are from also from the Kachimeric um, 52 hexagon blocks. How I've pieced them. A fussy cut. You can see, see the blocks. These ones are just pinned together. So that's the that's that crate of nearly finished. Three quarters finished, we'll say. And this is the last project box. Sorry about that. Bees. I love bee fabric. I've collected quite a few bee fabrics. And you can see there, I've been collecting them for about 15 years, bee fabric. And yellows and greys. And they're just lovely. But probably recognize most of these. Look at that one. This is such a useful fabric. And it's called Be Kind. How perfect. Studio fabrics. And you can see where I fussy cut, <laughs> fussy cut hexagons from it. And this is my, um, probably my backing for it. It's just a lovely black. I could wear this, but I bought it for a quilt. <laughs> I also love writing, you know, that's, um, that goes well with the quilts, the quilt theme that I'm making. Beautiful bees. I also have finished hexagons, bee hexagons. Some of them are swaps. I was in a group called the Happy Swappers, I think it was, or Happy Hexagon Swappers, in, oh, before COVID, and we swapped themes. So you can see, I was a real, I was really good at swapping. <laughs> I love the bees. And with swapping, you get to swap with people from all over the world. It's like having pen friends and you get fabrics and shapes that you can use. Retro. And that lovely one. I've got three of them. I must have made like thousands of hexagons and grandmother's flower garden shape hexagons over the last 12 years I would say I only got back into sewing like 12 years ago and knowing me it was full on because I just retired well I sort of retired I'm a medieval historian and I still do research but in my spare time I like to sew and knit so yeah 
this is a really lovely print because you can have the bees doing all different things. You know how bees go to their hive and they have special um, dances for different um, communication things, how far the flowers are, what sort of flowers, what colour, how they smell, all that sort of stuff. They communicate to each other. Got a lot of those ones. You can do all different things with them. These ones are all flying around in a circle, anti-clockwise. These ones are all flying into the centre. And these ones are just beautiful. So that are there, my projects that I've got to do, hopefully this year. Keep tuned, friends. This is also in my projects. So this is number six, row by row. Do you remember when everybody was collecting row by row um, blocks from quilting shops? My friend Joanna sent me this um, kit. It is so beautiful. And when you went to the um, quilt shops, you would get, it's like a number plate. Kitty approved. me I'm not a hoarder though did any of you go on these um, collecting trips to quilt shops perfect quilts fabric floozy <laughs> quilter with a cat attitude So this is a project I have yet to do. I will do it soon, hopefully. I am inspired. Girls day out. And then there was fabric that went with it too. I think I got this from uh, Hobby Sew. So. No, I got it from fabric.com. And this is beautiful. It's uh, a mat of all the quilting, with all quilting names, quilting destinations, and then fabric just with things on. So yeah, that's my other project. Thank you, Joanna, for this, and I will get round to making it hopefully this year. It is beautiful. And here's my bolero hack. I think it's a neat way to get more use from... It's like recycling, isn't it? It's upcycling. I think it's called upcycling. T-shirt to bolero. This is a great summer hack, friends. Let me show you. I started with a t-shirt that I no longer going to wear because it's expired. <laughs> so I thought I would cut down the center and see how it looked because I am looking for a top to go over my fen dresses that's not too hot, made out of nice cotton. I have quite a few of these Sarah t-shirts that are size 18 and yeah I just need something because my arms my upper arms are I like to have them covered so I got my t-shirt out that I had in the recycling and did a hack so I cut up the center from the beginning and this is what we have. It is a basic t-shirt that's now a bolero type cardigan. It's great. This is a better view of it. I have lost a bit of weight so my dresses fit a bit looser than they did. 
But yeah, when you cut down the center of the t-shirt, it doesn't need hemming because it's a very nice um, knit. Yeah. I'm thinking I might do this to one of the new ones. I have quite a collection of them. I purchased 19 of these black t-shirts. You might think I never change, but I do. <laughs> but yeah, what are your thoughts on this hack? I just think it's a great idea. That's me signing off for this episode, friends. Thank you for coming to join me in my lounge room and talk about crafting stuff. I do love talking about crafting stuff with you and I hope to see you soon. Please like and subscribe if you like this type of content, crafting content, and I'll see you soon. Bye friends.